Welcome back, everybody. Back in the kitchen with Karen Doster from the Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board, and we're making scones. That's right. I love scones. Scones are so good. You know, they almost sound scary if you don't know what they are, yep. but they're really just a quick bread. They're a biscuit that's kind of an individual and in triangles. It's kind of originated, I think, in, in maybe Great Britain, but. They uh, have them a lot here now. They're so easy to make. I was so surprised, actually. You so. know, and they're very festive. They're very trendy. Yep. If you mm -hmm. say you're serving scones, all of a sudden it's like, ooh, she went to a lot of effort to make scones. Uh, and they are delicious. Think a little bit sweet, but not super duper sweet. It's not like a muffin or a cinnamon roll. Um, they're flaky and buttery, and I love to put a little extra butter on them. Yep. Wonderful with coffee or tea. So Perfect for that. So yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to start with two cups of flour. We're going to add a quarter cup of sugar in there. We're going to whisk all the dry ingredients first. Okay. Baking powder, a tablespoon. That's the leavening in here. Okay. Uh, a little bit of salt. Okay. And then we have some ginger, about a mm. teaspoon of of ginger. Ooh, so there. that's going to be the yeah. nice holiday. Yeah. And that pairs well with cranberries uh, as well. And they're cranberry ricotta scones, by yes, the way. Yes, we're using Wisconsin ricotta cheese and actually the whole milk ricotta. That's the moisture in here, and it really does provide, make them really flaky and Ooh, tender and wonderful. moist. Wonderful, yeah, because really normally key. that's not a regular ingredient in scones. Right. I know yeah, that. Sometimes it's buttermilk or right. it might be half and half, okay. that type of thing. Now, this is really key. We're going to have some cold butter. It's always important to have cold butter when you're making something like this. Okay. We have six tablespoons, and you want to use a pastry blender. Uh, or two knives can work as well till it's kind of crumbly if you've ever made a biscuit it's the same kind of uh, process there okay can you cheat and use your food processor you could do that okay uh, some people do do that and that's fine too it's just once you've done that part and add the uh, wet ingredients it's better to manipulate with your hands so that you don't over mix got it, it. you really want these to be nice and tender okay okay so once that's done uh, we have some dried cranberries, actually a whole cup. And the here. ricotta doesn't go in yet? Not yet, okay. no. We want to okay. kind of mix the, the okay. all this dry, the fruit. Now, you know, if you were doing uh, apricots or any other dried fruit, this is you could do that as well. Ooh, Chocolate nice. chip scones, there's lots of different kinds of scones. So okay. We'll get that in there. And then we're going to add our moist ingredients. So we have a three-quarter cup of the Wisconsin whole milk ricotta cheese, and it's important to have the whole milk again because that's really going to provide the, the, there's it's more fat in there and that's going to make them more tender okay. and moist, okay? Okay. And then we do have some a liquid. We have some half and half, about two-thirds of a cup. Okay. So you want to get that all mixed together, and then once it starts coming together, you can start using your hands. But don't there. over mix. Don't over okay. mix, and that's why it's, it's probably best to do it with your your hands versus yep. putting it into a, a mixer. Now I love scones warm out of the oven. Um, mm -hmm. I mean that's really my preference. Can this dough be made a little bit ahead, or once you get it together, you got to get it right? In the well, oven? actually, in the recipe, and this is on our GreatPairShare.com online magazine, it does suggest that if you want to, you could put them on your sheet pan. And I have it lined with parchment paper. Freeze them overnight and then take the whole pan out and put it in the oven. Ooh. You just add about uh, five, 10 more minutes to the baking. There you go. That's you what I did this morning, ahead. so yeah. that is easy. I like that, so along with your egg bake, you could make that ahead of time, so okay. that's perfect. Now, um, I actually had some that I kind of manipulated a little bit, okay. so it makes All it right. easier. So you get in there with your hands, yeah. and, and, and don't over mix. You can actually see in this dough, you can actually see the, the, the butter, and that's, that's right. a good thing. It is, because that's going to make it nice and tender and flaky. Okay. So for a scone, scones usually want to make it into a round circle and a, about an inch thick. Okay. Okay, so it's about this size there. Okay. Okay. And then uh, you could use a knife, or I have one of these um, pastry cutters here. Scones are uh, triangles generally, okay, so we're going to cut that into eighths here, like this. So, for example, like that, okay, and then you could just place it on the, on the pan right there, lined with parchment paper again. These are so beautiful, and they're going to bake up to be big and beautiful. You can see the cranberries That's in there. That's right. Yeah. So put that on there, and then um, what you want to do too, Amy, is brush it with a little bit of uh, egg wash okay. on there. Okay. That will allow it to, to brown a little bit, and then I have some um, coarse sugar too okay. that goes on top of it. All right. Oven temperature for these. Karen. This one would be 425. It's a higher temperature because you want them to rise quickly. Okay. And then start browning. That will really make them nice and tender and light. And how long do they bake for? About 15-20 um, minutes. So they're quick. Yeah. If it's in the freezer the night before, it might be again about five minutes more. Okay. So just till they're nice and brown. You could actually take a toothpick and the center, if it comes out clean, it will be done. And you bake them at the frozen state, which is so yeah, interesting. So at that's this what point, I did this morning. <laughs> you would um, freeze them after you put the egg wash and everything else? And the sugar, yeah. Okay. Yep. And then you just cover it up cover? with some plastic, okay. really tightly with plastic wrap, and okay. put it in your freezer. And then you could pull it out, 
your oven's already at 425 and just put them directly into the oven. So that makes it really easy and, and definitely uh, an easy make ahead. Now this, we're doing the sanding sugar, which you can mm -hmm. find at specialty hobby stores and things like that. Regular mm -hmm. sugar would also work, but it would really this pretty. It allows it to stay on there a little and bit. And it looks really pretty. Karen, so great to see yeah, you. I hope you have a wonderful, happy holiday with your family. And thanks Thank for you. always, thanks All for the right. recipes. And by the way, you can get the recipes on our website or you can get them at that website. GreatPearShare.com. Wonderful. Okay. Thanks. Thank we'll be you. right back to wrap things up, so stay with us.